Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the gamma distribution. This is a continuous probability distribution that's most frequently used to model waiting time for a certain number, call it alpha, of occurrences of a randomly occurring event, like calls to a pizza place or defect defects in a production line. Technically, events like that are said to occur according to a Poisson process. And the key thing there is that the events all need to be independent of one another. So let's get some technical stuff here. Let x be the random variable in question, the elapsed time before the alpha event, and let theta be the average time between occurrences. Then the cumulative distribution function for that random variable x is just the probability, I'm sorry, one minus the probability of getting fewer than alpha occurrences before time x. And when we're talking about probability for a certain number of occurrences in a fixed amount of time, we're talking about a Poisson distribution that has um, a probability mass function given by the gobbledygook inside that summation formula. I have a whole video on the Poisson distribution. I'll throw a link up top. If you're not familiar with that, you really should start with that before diving into the gamma distribution. So this cumulative distribution function is kind of ugly. The good news is that if we differentiate it and simplify to get the probability density function, the PDF, things get slightly nicer. We get x to the alpha minus 1, e to the negative x over theta, alpha minus 1 factorial times theta to the alpha in the denominator. Since x is modeling waiting time here, the random variable x, the support is going to be only positive values, so x greater than or equal to 0. Now, it's fine to have alpha be an integer and to use factorials when we're talking about waiting time, but sometimes the gamma distribution gets used to model um, other phenomenon as well. And so we'd like to be a bit more flexible if possible. We'd like to not have to require that alpha be a positive integer. So we can generalize this factorial function using the gamma function. And the gamma function um, is a mathematical construct that just agrees with the factorial on the positive integers. In fact, gamma of n is n minus 1 factorial. So taking out the alpha minus 1 factorial in that PDF up above, replacing it with gamma of alpha, we get this. And this is the version of the PDF of the gamma distribution that you'll usually see cited in books. There are common names for these parameters. Alpha is known as the shape parameter and theta is known as the scale parameter. Sometimes instead of theta, we'll use the reciprocal, lambda equals one over theta, to get this formulation. It's somewhat less common, but you will see it. In particular, R uses this formulation when doing its calculations. Um, remember, theta is representing the average time between occurrences, and so it's reciprocal. Lambda is going to represent the average number of occurrences per unit time. So that's that parameter is directly coming from the underlying Poisson process. Because of that fact, um, lambda is often called the rate parameter. The gamma distribution has expected value mu equals alpha times theta, and that makes sense since theta is the average time between occurrences, and alpha is the total number of occurrences. So the expected waiting time for alpha occurrences is just that number alpha times the waiting time per occurrence. Makes sense. The variance formula is a little bit less memorable. It's alpha times theta squared. Each of these can be proved using the moment generating function, m of t equals 1 over 1 minus theta t quantity to the alpha. I won't go through any of those proofs right here. You can easily Google those if you need to. OK, let's do a couple of examples. On a Saturday morning, customers arrive at a bakery, according to a Poisson process, at an average rate of 15 customers per hour. First of all, what's the probability that it takes less than 10 minutes for the first three customers to arrive? The gamma distribution is going to be appropriate here since we're modeling waiting time in a Poisson process. Since 15 customers arrive every 60 minutes, one arrives every four minutes on average. So that's our first parameter. Theta is equal to four here, the average time between occurrences. The other parameter here, alpha, is the total number of occurrences in question, the number that we're interested in. So here, alpha is equal to three. OK, so now that we've got both of our parameters, we have our probability density function. We can get our total probability here by doing an integral. So the probability that the total waiting time is less than or equal to 10 is the integral from 0 to 10 of that PDF. And here I've just taken the PDF of the gamma function, plugged in alpha equals 3, theta equals 4. We can do this integral by integration by parts if we have to. 
using technology like a Wolfram Alpha is better. Um, in my next video, I'm going to show how to get this probability using R using the P gamma function. Once that video is ready, I'll throw a link to that up top as well. Problem two. What's the average amount of time that will elapse before three customers arrive at the bakery? So here we're just trying to get the expected value of that same gamma distribution. So we're going to use that formula from a few slides ago. Mu is equal to theta times alpha, four times three, <laughs> about 12 minutes. Problem three. What's the probability that exactly 15 customers arrive in one hour? Now, in this case, we're talking about the number of customers that arrive in a fixed amount of time. So the random variable here is actually the number of occurrences, not the waiting time. So the gamma distribution is not the best way to go about this problem. Instead, we should use the Poisson distribution directly. So um, again, I'll throw a link up top to that once again. In this case, um, the we have this probability mass function. This is standard for the Poisson distribution, lambda to the x, e to the negative lambda over x factorial, where x is the number of occurrences that we're interested in. So here it's going to be 15. Um, we are told that they arrive at an average rate of 15 per hour. So lambda is equal to 15. We plug into our probability mass function, simplify, and get about 10%. There are two particularly important special cases to the gamma function. First of all, if alpha equals one, so we're just waiting for one occurrence, we have the exponential distribution, which specifically models the waiting time between occurrences in a Poisson process. In other words, the waiting time for a single occurrence. The gamma function's PDF simplifies to one over theta, e to the negative x over theta in this case. The other important special case is when theta is equal to two, and alpha is equal to r over two, where r is just some positive integer. And this is called the chi-squared distribution with r degrees of freedom, which also comes up all the time in probability theory and practice. It comes up all the time because it models the sum of the squares of r random variables, each of which has a standard normal distribution. Once again, we can take that PDF for the gamma function, plug in those stated values and simplify to get the PDF for the chi-squared distribution. 